In this video, we're going to talk about configuring printers on Windows 7. And you'll be pleased to know that if you're a mobile user, Microsoft have introduced a new feature to Windows 7 called Location Aware Printing. And this is a really cool new feature that allows you to have Windows 7 automatically configure a default printer based on where you are, based on what network you're connected to. So for example, if you're at work and you want to connect to the big HP color laser jet in the corner of the office, that's fine. But when you take your notebook home, you want it to automatically connect to your Canon inkjet printer. Well, Windows 7 can arrange that for you. And let me tell you, it works just great. So let's get started and talk about printers, but I do want to address one issue before we start this video, and that's dealing with the concept of a printer versus a print driver. You see, when Microsoft refer to a printer, they're actually talking about a bit of software. In other words, they're talking about a print driver, the piece of software that enables your real physical printer to be able to talk to Windows. That's what Microsoft call a printer. Now, when Microsoft refer to a physical printer, this is the, the box in the corner that spits out the paper, Microsoft refer to this as the print device. Obviously, Microsoft have never been one to conform to standards, and they also want to take over the English language as well. So I like to call a printer a printer. I think that's rather logical. But a printer in Microsoft speak is actually the driver. The print device is the physical Canon HP Epson printer. Now, with that definition in mind, keep that in the back of your mind, we also have two different types of printers. We're going to have a locally attached printer and a network printer. So a local printer, or should I say a locally attached print device, this is the type of printer that you plug directly into your machine. So nowadays, it's the sort of printer that's going to be connected probably via a USB cable, although you might find some old models using a parallel cable. Now a network printer on the other hand, this is our other type, a network printer, this doesn't plug directly into your computer, although they can. Instead, it's connected to the network itself. Now, this could be a Ethernet wired printer, or it could be a wireless one. So an example of, say, a wired printer would be Hewlett Packard printers that have DirectJet cards installed, which is basically just its own network card. So you're going to plug that straight into a hub or a switch. You can allocate it a static IP address or use DHCP to give it its IP address, you'll communicate with that printer that way. And of course, a Wi-Fi printer, well, we'll just connect that to our access point. So every physical printer that you have connected to your Windows 7 machine is going to be represented in Windows 7 as a logical printer. Now, a logical printer defines all of the characteristics of the printer itself, and it's going to be made up of a whole bunch of different things. It will be the print driver, we're going to have all of the settings and other properties that control how Windows 7 is going to communicate with the physical print device, the box over here. Now in order to be able to add a printer to Windows 7, you must be a member of the administrators group or the print operators group. Anything less, you're going to be denied the ability to add a printer to your machine. Okay, so to add a printer to your Windows 7 machine, it's not like it used to be. It used to be all difficult. Nowadays, the most likely scenario is that you're going to plug your USB printer into an available USB port. You'll switch the thing on, and it's automatically going to find the printer and install the software with the disk provided with your printer. Now we can also do things the hard way and install our printers manually. So let's give that a shot. So to do that, we're going to click start and over here we'll choose devices and printers. Now one of the first differences between Windows 7 and 
older other versions of Windows is that this devices and printer screen now at least attempts to load up some realistic icons that actually attempt to mimic what your real device looks like. Now in some cases it just has to pick a generic icon, but I know my own PC at home shows up things like my Logitech keyboard and mouse using these high resolution icons that really look like the actual device. So if you'd like Windows 7 to access the internet to download these device images, you can click this yellow bar at the top and turn that feature on. Now it is purely a cosmetic thing though, but it is a nice touch. Anyhow, that's not what we're here for. We're talking about printers today. And as you can see, we do actually have a couple of printers defined. We have a fax and the Microsoft XPS document writer. Now you will also note that I've got a couple here that also say another fax redirected to and this Microsoft XPS document writer redirected to. That's because I'm connected to a notebook computer here using remote desktop. So it's taking the same printers from my local machine that I'm on right now and it's making them available through this session. So ordinarily, we just see the two. Now I'm sure you guys already know what a fax machine is, but this XPS document writer might be foreign to you if you haven't at least used Windows Vista before. You see, XPS is Microsoft's answer to a PDF file. Now when you print from any application that supports printing, you can save the file as this XPS file, which is really just an XML file. Then you can email that file, you can save it, print it, and manipulate it just as you would any other file. Now the upside to using this format to save documents in is that for printers that support this XPS format, the file can simply be printed without first having to convert it to any specific printer language, which at least in theory means that the resulting print should be better quality because there's no conversion happening in the background. And that sort of conversion can often result in your printout not looking the same as what you see on the screen. Now realize that these XPS files are really just zip files with a bunch of files inside it. So let's test it. Let's go and click Start and we're going to fire up a copy of notepad and we'll just add some text in here it really doesn't matter we'll just say hello and now we'll choose file we'll choose print we're going to choose our microsoft xps document writer to print to we'll click print now since we're actually saving a file here and not really printing the document to a real physical printer it'll open up this save as dialog box. So let's give this file a name. I'm going to pop this on my desktop here. I'll call this file hello. And in fact, no, I'll put it there in my, in my documents folder and we'll click save. All right, that's done. So now let's go and open up our computer. We'll go to our documents folder. There's our hello XPS file. And if I double click on this file, it's actually going to open up not in Internet Explorer like it did with Windows Vista, if you're familiar with that, in Windows 7 we actually now have an XPS file viewer. And from here we're able to do things like we can save the file, we can print it, we can digitally sign the file, and so forth. All right, well let's close this, and I'm also going to close Notepad. I don't need to save that. And we'll go back to our Explorer window here, and I'll hold down the Alt key on my keyboard, so I can get my menu bar up. We'll click the Tools menu. I'm gonna to go to Folder Options, then the View tab. And down here, we've got this box checked to hide our file extensions for our known file types. I'm gonna uncheck that box for now and click OK. And that's gonna allow me to see our .xps file extension. So now I'm going to right click on this file and choose Rename. And I'm gonna rename or take away our file extension and change it to a zip file. So we'll click away, we'll say yes, we want to change that. This has become a zip file. So now if we double click on that file, and contained inside this zip archive file, you're going to find XML files, your digital rights information, and any fonts and images that you actually used in your document. And since all of these files are contained within the XPS file, which is a standard Microsoft has released under a royalty-free patent license, this means that all printers that support the XPS file format should be able to print the file exactly as it was intended without losing quality as would normally be the case with converting it. All right, well, let's close this now. Let's go back to our devices and printers folder. So to add a new printer, we can simply right click 
and choose to add a printer. Or we can do the same from up here in the menu. So let's click that. We'll get two options here. Is the printer that we want to add a locally attached printer? Or is it a network wireless or Bluetooth printer? Now, do take note of what it does say though. If your printer is a USB printer, then you won't need to go through this interface because a USB printer is going to be automatically detected by Windows 7. So this option really is only for printers that are connected with older connections, such as a parallel or a serial port. Now, in my case, I don't actually have a physical print device, I use the word print device, attached to my computer. But that really doesn't matter. We can still add one in anyway. So I'm going to choose a local printer. From this drop-down box here, this drop-down window, we can choose what port our printer is connected to. Now, in most cases with these legacy devices, it's probably going to be a parallel port. So LPT1 is likely to be the correct choice. So I'm going to go with that. But we can also create our own port if we like. So I'm going to use our existing port of LPT1. We'll click Next. All right, now you can run through this list here of printer manufacturers and locate a printer model that you have. But if it doesn't appear from this list and you do have drivers on your hard drive or on a CD or somewhere else, or if you downloaded them from the web, click on the Have Disk button, and then you can simply browse to where you have those drivers stored. Now, since I don't have a local printer attached, I'm going to accept anything really. So I'm going to choose an HP... Let's just pick one of these. I'm going to go with an HP OfficeJet Pro L7700 series, whatever that is. And we'll click Next. Now we can assign this printer a name, and the default here is probably fine for my purposes, so I'll choose Next. And our printer is going to be installed. Now if we want, we can choose to share this printer so that other people on our network can use it. But since we are dealing with a client operating system here, you might not want to share that, but that's up to you. I'm happy to share it using its default name here. So I'll do that. I'll just click Next. And I'll leave this box here checked to set this printer as our default printer. And you'll also note here down the bottom of this window, we could also choose to print a test page, which is not a bad idea to ensure that our printer is actually working. Now, I'm not going to bother with doing that now since, well, there's two reasons. One is, even if this was a real printer I was hooking up, you wouldn't be able to tell if it was working anyway. And the second reason is, this printer actually doesn't exist. So there's no point. So we'll just click Finish. All right, there's our new printer, complete with this big green tick telling us that this is now the default printer. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of the printer options we have with this printer. So we're going to right-click on our new OfficeJet printer and select Printer Properties. All right, now, before we get too far into this topic, one thing I do want to mention is that you're going to find that some of your printer properties and configuration options we look at over these next couple of screens here are going to be slightly different from this one, unless, of course, you are using an OfficeJet L7700, because most printers and drivers are going to have some different options. So whilst most of the tabs you see here are going to be the same, some of the options you see will be specific to your printer, and because of that, you're going to see some different settings. So firstly here on the general tab you're going to find out some basic information about your printer. The name has been automatically populated when we installed the printer but our location field and our comments field are not. Now if you're installing printers in an enterprise I would certainly recommend that you make use of these fields especially the location field as they can assist you in finding printers later on. But in order to use this feature, you have to enable printer location tracking in group policy. Now, if you take a look at the printer's video from our Windows Server 2003 product, you're going to see how to configure printer location tracking. Now, for a home PC, well, you wouldn't bother with any of this really because it serves very little use. Now, next, we can see the printer model and we can see some specific information about this printer's capabilities. Now, if we click the Preferences button, we'll be able to set some options such as things like our paper size, the trays where we'll be pulling our paper from. We can choose what type of media we'll be printed on, whether that's plain paper, whether that's bright HP paper. It'll support things like 
glossy paper, cardboard or transparencies. And over on the right here, by the way, if we click this image, we can set whether we want to use landscape or portrait printing. Now on the advanced tab, we can set things like whether we want to mirror our image or whether we want to minimize the margins on our image. These options here are generally quite specific to your type of printer. Now next we have our features tab and here we can specify what types of paper we want to use. So we could choose plain paper or if we go through the more settings we could choose things like glossy paper and premium photo papers. We can print out again in landscape mode or portrait mode. We could resize our prints. This particular printer also supports red eye removal. How about that? And over on the right we can set up things like two-sided printing as well. Now finally we've got our colour tab where we can opt to print in grayscale if we like or colour and if we click on this more colour options button for this printer we can alter some of the colour settings as well. Now again for this printer some of these settings are going to be available for your printer many of them are going to be unique to this printer but either way you're going to find a lot of similar options. Okay, well back at the properties of our printer, the next tab we have is the sharing tab here and that allows us to share our printer just like we would sharing files and folders. Now you can change the share name for this printer if you like and down the bottom if we click on the additional drivers button, people that connect to your computer to access this printer are going to download drivers from you and by default it's going to allow any 32-bit edition of Windows 7 to download the driver for this printer. And that's because this computer here is running a 32-bit edition of Windows 7. Now if we do want to allow 64-bit editions of Windows 7 to also use this printer then we could check this box here and simply install the drivers. Now since those 64-bit drivers aren't installed on my computer and you can see that listed here that no they're not, if I was to click OK, we would be prompted to install them on that computer. That way, when another person uses our shared printer and they have a 64-bit edition of Windows 7, they'll then grab the correct drivers from us. All right, the next we have the Ports tab here, and this is where we can set the port that the printer communicates through. Now, if the printer is a local printer, you'd normally expect to see the printer connected through your LPT1 or a USB port. But for network printers, you'd see the printer connected through a TCP IP port. Now below these ports, we've got these two checkboxes here. The first, enable bidirectional support, simply means that the printer is going to communicate both ways between the client, in this case our Windows 7 operating system, and the printer. That way we can see real-time statuses of our print jobs. Now the enable printer pooling checkbox is disabled by default. What this does is it enables you to set up one logical print device for multiple printers. So let's assume for the moment that I have two physical OfficeJet printers, and that's my very poor drawing here of an OfficeJet printer. Let's hope they look a bit better than that in the real world. So we'll assume that I've got two of them that I have attached to my computer. And we'll say here's my computer. So what this print pooling checkbox does is it enables me to select these two printers here and have my computer send its print jobs to one logical printer in Windows. So essentially in our devices and printers area we're going to see our office jet uh, it was a 7700 I believe we're going to see one printer listed there but that's actually going to be talking to two physical printers so what this enables me to do is to use the two physical printers to share the printing load now obviously in a home environment well you know you're not going to be really using that but it enables me in a corporate environment to get better performance especially when we've got a user who starts running his monthly thousand page report that prevents everyone else from using the printer automatically what's going to happen is the other printer is going to kick in and start printing everyone else's jobs. So to be able to use this print pooling you need to have two printers that share a couple of things. Firstly they're going to have to have the same print driver. So typically it means 
Really what you're gonna to have to have is two absolutely identical printers with the same amount of memory installed for this feature to work. But on a client operating system like Windows 7, you probably won't be using an option like this. In a server operating system, maybe. But Windows 7, it's unlikely. But there it is, just in case you have the luxury of having two of the same printers. Okay, well moving along, the next tab we have is the Advanced tab, and here we've got options that allow us to control access to our printer based on the time of day that it is. We could also set a priority on the printer traffic. So what this means is that we could set up two logical printers that point to one physical printer, and we can have different priorities for different people. So let's set this up so you understand what I'm talking about. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel this right now, and I'll select our HP printer and for demonstration purposes here I'm going to right click on it we're going to choose to to go back into our printer properties I'm going to rename this printer and I'm going to call it my printer we'll click OK alright there it is now let's go and add in a second printer so we're going to go add a printer We'll go a local printer again, we'll do this quickly, we'll click next. We're gonna make it an office jet, same one again, we'll click next. We're gonna use the driver that's currently installed because it's already there, we installed it earlier, we'll click next. Now for the name of this printer, I'm gonna call this one Other People and we'll click next. That printer will then be installed, it's pretty quick. I'll share this printer, that's fine, we'll click next. I will not do a print test page and I will not make this the default. We'll click finish. Okay, now we've got two printers configured for our Windows 7 computer. We've got my HP printer and the one for other people. Just both of them though are represented by this same icon. Now obviously these two logical printers really point to the same physical printer connected to my parallel port, but the purpose of having two of them is so that now we can assign them priorities. So now if we right click on our HP printer, or my HP printer that is, and choose printer properties, you'll see we have two printers here, my printer and the other people's one. So we'll click my printer. We're gonna to go to the advanced tab. Now here we can set the priority of this printer to a higher value, let's say two. So what that means is that if a print job is sent to this printer, at the same time that a job is sent to the other people's printer. They're both going to the same physical box, but my print job is gonna print first because it has a higher priority. So remember, the higher the number you see here in the priority field, the higher the print priority. Now obviously, if I wanna be truly selfish and ensure that no one connects to my HP printer, then I could also choose not to share it at all, then only share out the other printer I've called other people and let them use that one. So that way my prints are always gonna take priority. Now in a home environment, you probably won't bother with setting up options like this, but in a corporate environment, hey, it's a good idea and one which will please managers no end when they have the priority over us unimportant folks. And as you've seen, it really only takes a few seconds to configure it. Okay, well, the other options we have here is to change the driver that we're using by selecting either another one from our drop-down box if we have one installed, or installing through this new driver wizard. Now the default here is to spool our documents first, which will make your program, a program like Microsoft Word for example, finish its printing process faster without making it wait for the printer to actually finish. Now we can choose to start printing immediately, which is the default, or we could choose to wait until after the last page is spooled before we start printing. Now, if we don't want to spool any documents at all, we can simply print to the printer itself as well. Next, we have hold mismatched documents, and this setting simply allows us to hold documents that have been printed using settings that differ from what you see here. So for example, if I hit print in an application, let's say Microsoft Word, and I've chosen to print it duplex, meaning both sides of the paper, and I've configured the printer though to not use duplex, then if I activate this setting, that's gonna put this print job on hold because the document 
print settings and the printer print settings are obviously mismatched. Now print spooled documents first option will do what it says and it's going to print documents that have already been spooled before any new documents regardless of what priority has been set up the top here. So if a regular user on my lower priority printer has already spooled his document for printing and then along comes me with my higher priority and I send off my print job, then that user's job that's already been spooled out is going to print first. Now we can choose to keep printed documents rather than deleting them once they've been printed and we can enable advanced printing features for this printer if the printer supports them. Now we can set the printing defaults such as our portrait and landscape options and what sort of paper we're going to use and so on and we've already seen that earlier in this video and the options of course you see here are going to depend on what print driver that you're using. The next button here, the print processor button, allows us to select which print processor we'd like to use when we print our documents and we can choose from raw, EMF and text and it's unlikely you're ever going to come in here and change these but you can if you need to. Raw is obviously the default here for my printer which simply means that the print job that's going to be sent off to the printer will be formatted for a specific device. In my case it's going to be a Hewlett Packard Office Jet printer. Now if you do want to print a separator page you can do that so it makes identifying where a print job finishes and where the next job begins we can click this button and then browse to a location where we have a separator page stored. Now obviously whilst a separator page does waste an additional piece of paper each time you do a print it does make it easier to locate your print job when lots of people tend to print things off and never collect them off the printer. Okay well next we can choose to configure our color management settings as well and whilst this isn't likely to be something that your average user is going to bother with if you're in the printing industry or maybe you're a photographer it can be quite important to you to closely match the colors you see on your screen with the colors that your printer lays down on paper when it prints so often there is a mismatch with the two not looking identical so in here we can use color profiles to ensure that the differences between the colors on the printer and the colors on the screen are obviously minimized. Our next tab is the security tab here and we can control access to the printer via permissions. Now it's important to understand that by default everyone can print to a printer and the creator owner, this is the user that sent the print job in the first place. They're able to manage their own print jobs. So let's say we've got a user on this computer called Jordan and he hits print in Microsoft Word and he sends off his print job. Automatically he then becomes the creator owner and he has permission to manage his own print jobs. However, members of the everyone group, and that is everyone, they can't manage the print jobs of a different user unless they're a member of the administrators group. So if I didn't want other people to print to my printer, I could simply uncheck this print option here on the everyone group or just simply remove the group altogether by highlighting the group and clicking remove. Okay well our next tab is the device settings tab and here we can set options that are specific to our print device and obviously this tab here is going to differ depending on what printer you have installed. So here you're going to have settings like what sort of paper you're going to use whether it's letter or A4 and so on, whether it's a duplex printer, the sort of memory you have and so forth. Now finally our last tab here is the about tab and likely you're going to find a little bit of information about the driver and the manufacturer of the printer. Okay well let's cancel this right now and at the top menu here you'll notice that we've got this print server properties button. Now if we select that from here we'll be able to set up things like forms which we use to define the standard sizes for our paper and our envelopes and our transparencies. And here you're going to see already a bunch of standard international sizes for things like A4 and letter and A3 and so on. But if you do have some specific size stationery that you'd like to use for your company or at home and it's a unique size you're able to configure it here. So to do that we'd simply click to create a new form and choose from either metric centimeters or English inches and then would set the width and the height and the length of the stationery as well as things like our margins. We'd then simply give it a name, my form, and then we'd click 
save form. Now in our ports tab here, we can also add, delete and configure our ports for our server. We can configure the drivers that we have installed on this computer and of course we can see all of the drivers we have on our Windows 7 computer, not just ones for a specific printer. The security tab allows us to specify who's able to print and manage jobs, we've already talked about that. And finally on our advanced tab, we can see the default path here of our print spooler, which is under our system32 directory, spool and in a folder called printers. Now we can change that if we want to by clicking change advanced settings button at the bottom. That's going to ungray out this feature in just a moment, there you go. And you can certainly edit this if you like, but bear in mind that if you do change this principal location, make sure that you also change the permissions on the new location, so that way everyone can't just get in there and start deleting things. Now beep on errors of remote documents is a setting that's going to display a warning balloon style pop-up message when a document fails to print, that way it's going to alert you that your print job failed. Now we can also show informational notifications for local printers and that's going to display the status of all of the print jobs that have been sent to this print server by the local user. And finally, show informational notifications for network printers is going to display the status of the print jobs sent by the local users to other network printers. Okay, well that's our printer and our print server properties. But even if I was able to print something, you guys listening to this video wouldn't be able to see it. But let's go ahead and let's print a document anyway. So I'm going to click on Start, and I'm going to type in Word. And I don't have Microsoft Word, of course, here, but I do have WordPad, so I'm going to load that up. And I am going to go up to our File menu, if you like, and click Print. And that's going to attempt to print the current document, which of course doesn't contain anything, but that's okay. Let's just print it to my printer, since that doesn't exist either way, is a good match. And the reason I'm printing it here is because that way it's going to stay around a little longer for us to see something in our print queue. So we're going to hit print, and we'll be able to see our print icon down here pending in the system tray. So if we hover our mouse over it, you can see we have one document pending. Now if we double click on that, you're going to see here our print queue which contains our document, which has obviously got an error right now. And that's logical because it's not able to print to a printer that doesn't exist. So from here, if we right click on our document, we can pause the printing, we could restart the job, or we can cancel it entirely. But if we select the bottom option, Properties, and go to the General tab, we can view some more information about the job, things like the size of the job, who sent it, which was me, the trainer account. We can also change the priority of the print job as well. So if this happens to be a rather important document, we can raise the priority so it prints faster. Or if it was an end of month report that's a lot of pages and doesn't really have any priority as such, we could schedule it to print even at a later time if we like. All right, now the final thing that I'd like to talk about in this video is the new location aware print feature that's unique to Windows 7. Now location aware printing allows us to have Windows 7 automatically configure a default printer based on what network you're connected to. Now the catch with this feature is that it only works on portable computers, which is logical really, because you're hardly going to pick up your desktop and take it from network to network very often, if at all. So the most likely target for this technology is the guy or girl who takes their notebook to work and then maybe travels between sites and then takes their notebook home and connects it to their home computer. So let's see how we can configure it. So what we'll need to do is select our printer from our devices and printers window and at the top we've got this option here to manage our default printers. So let's select that. Now here we have two options. We can always use the same printer as our default printer, which is basically the same as saying don't even use this location aware printing feature. Or we can change our default printer when we change networks. So to use this feature we'll need to select this second option here, which it is by default. Now in the middle of this window here you can see we've got these two drop down boxes. So all we need to do is to select a network from the first drop down box. So I'm going to select my wireless, this is my wireless test network here. And in the second drop down box, I'm going to choose the printer that I want to be the default printer. 
when I happen to be connected to this wireless network. All right, now we can click the update button and that's it. Whenever this notebook here connects to the wireless network, it's gonna automatically make the My Printer the default printer. Of course, we can select multiple networks as well. So let's say I've got another network here. This is a wired network, jorkus.com. For that, I would like my other people printer to be the default. So let's add that in. So this is pretty easy. So if you were to take your notebook over to a friend's place and you connect to their wireless network, for example, you could have a setting for his printer. And that's as simple as it gets. It doesn't have to be any more difficult than that. Select the network, pick the printer, select add, and you're done. So wherever you go, your default printer is going to change to match the network that you're connecting to. So managing your printers on Windows 7 is a pretty simple process as you've seen. And after this video, you should be able to configure your printers and have Windows 7 automatically choose the correct printer when you're moving from network to network using this new location aware printing feature. So we hope you've enjoyed this video and would like to thank you for watching.